Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. Uh, just so you know, I'm... Um, I currently have what is known as a strike on my channel. The two-week suspension is over, but they give you, uh, you, if you get another one within three months, they suspend you for a month. And if you get two of them, uh, your channel's deleted. And I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm being very, very selective in what I say and what have you. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't done much. I mean, you know, go to go to the playlists and find a subject that, you know, I've got some playlists that are like 20 some odd hours of Bible studies where I go into fairly detailed single subjects, you know. And I've got 1,500 plus Bible studies. So, you know, it's not like uh, I've covered a lot of different subjects. But uh, this Bible study is going to be on drought, God's wake up call. Let you know a little secret. Well, it's not really a secret, but when God would send a prophet to his people, and I'm not claiming to be one, forget about it. I'm not, no. But when God would send a prophet to his people, more often than not, it was to pronounce judgment upon wickedness. And there's been very, very few times in biblical history when God's people were fairly righteous. Um, you know, Josiah, uh, David, um, the beginning of Solomon's reign, uh, a few here and there. But... Um, you know, even when Jesus came and performing all the miracles and the things that he did, the wicked ones, the children of the devil, and I'm not talking about a spiritual, well, they were spiritual children of the devil, but they are the literal hybrid children of the fallen angels. And very, very, you know, very few churches will teach that. And most of so-called churches, especially those that are overrun with Masonic Lodge Freemasons, will deny it because they work for the enemy. But there's, there's no way in Genesis 6 that the sons of God could be believing men and then the daughters of men are unbelieving women. And then the believing men married unbelieving women and had giants for children. And then, in, you know, like when the giants facing Goliath and Israel had six fingers and six toes, you know, believing men marrying unbelieving women do not have giants with six fingers and six toes for children. Uh, it just doesn't happen like that. And besides, read Job 38. The sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't show up until six days that later. Okay. Adam wasn't shouting for joy before he was created, before he was formed from the dust of the earth. Read Genesis 1, 2 and chapters 1 and 2. I mean, you know, come on. But um, this generation is so ignorant of the Bible. It, it means lack of Bible knowledge. I think it's in the book of Amos. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, that's how we are today. You know, people send their children to elementary school where they learn about dinosaurs that lived millions and millions of years ago. And then they go to middle school, junior high, whatever they call it now, and dinosaurs lived millions and millions of years ago. 
Then they go to high school, and millions and millions of years ago. And then they go to college for four years, millions and millions of years ago. And then they can't understand why their kids are atheists. You know, it's just, really. But the, uh, the Bible is a science book. The Bible does have science in it. And uh, what can I tell you? But the Bible is the book of God's people. You know, I know the those that claim that uh, whosoever will, uh, they, they want you to think that just whoever believes in God is going to be saved. But God has a people, and God has enemies. And I've covered that in previous studies. Um, and sadly, in the time of Jesus, when he was walking the earth as a, you know, human, God in the flesh, um, many of our people followed God's enemies. You know, King Herod, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian who was a contemporary of Christ, traced Herod's family line back to Esau. And Esau married into the Hittites, who were part of the Canaanites, who were part of that uh, satanic hybrids, satanic fallen angel human hybrids. And he was the one that had put all the money into the temple. And you better believe Herod did not build or add on to the temple because he wanted to worship God. Now, you know, you know Herod, the guy that uh, killed all the children in Bethlehem trying uh, two years and under, trying to kill Jesus. Yeah, that Herod. The whole family was bad. You know, but he was the one that appointed the chief priests and what have you. And uh, all I know is bad news. Any way you look at it. But unfortunately, a lot of people listened to the religious leaders, if you catch my drift. Let's just say it, it rhymes with news and uh, starts with the letter J. Yeah, the religious leaders. You know, Jesus never condemned the cat, um, Rome. He never did. But he condemned the religious leaders. And that's what I'm saying. Um, if the people were wicked and a prophet, even Christ, um, performed miracles and to validate that they were one of God's messengers um, and they told the people to repent and... And pronounce judgment upon them for their wickedness. People didn't want to hear that. And they would kill the prophets. According to legend, Isaiah was uh, put inside a log. And they cut him in half with a, a saw. I mean, really? What a way to go, huh? Well, look at Jesus. He was crucified. I heard that crucifixion was like one of the worst ways to die. I don't think I'd want to find out why, but, um, you know, what can I tell you? But um, drought and no rain, which is what it is, is a wake-up call for people to repent. You know, um, there's a guy, he runs a website called Christogenia, uh, William Fink, I, I think he's abs, uh, aptly named, but uh, he, he teaches, well, if you're the right skin color, you're saved. It don't matter. doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus. doesn't matter if you repent. doesn't matter if you keep God's laws. You're going to be saved. I'm like, why did Christ even come to the earth if that's true? You know? But that's not what Jesus taught. And they'll, you know, take one verse out of context and build an entire church so-called over it. You know, Jesus warned people to repent. John the Baptist warned people to repent. 
I mean, that's a common theme in the Bible. And uh, if, uh, if there's no rain, that's one of God's wake-up calls that a nation is wicked. And let me tell you something, people. The Southwest and the West, United, part of the United States, is in severe drought. Yeah, severe drought. California, Texas. Um, a number of years ago, um, in the 90s, mid to late 90s, I was driving through Texas, and I stopped at a restaurant. Might have been a barbecue place, you know. Can't beat Texas barbecue. But um, they were kind of church friendly, and they had a like a bulletin board in the back, and they had a church posting there, and uh, even back then, and they said, "Please, everybody, pray for rain." And I looked at that, and I was like pray for rain what do you mean pray for rain you know you're god's not going to send rain if you're unless there's repentance there has to, pen, repentance comes first people absolutely comes first so let's take a look at something Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. And I've had so many people say, well, you know, you don't read the Old Testament because that's the book of the you-know-whos. No, that's our book. From Genesis to Revelation is our book. Those that are in Christ. Galatians 3.29 says, and if ye be Christ, then all are ye not become not spiritual seed then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise and god made a covenant with abraham not with i not with ishmael not with esau abraham confirmed it with isaac and confirmed it with jacob he's uh jacob israel god has a chosen people And they want you to think that the Antichrists are God's chosen people. And if you don't know what an Antichrist is, I suggest you read the uh, first, second, and third John. It says anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ is an Antichrist. Uh, call those religious leaders and uh, talk to their uh, talk to their leader and. Ask if Jesus is the Christ. Well, pff, if if they thought Jesus was the Christ, they'd be Christians, wouldn't they? Yeah, but they're not. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. You know, it's... i got to be real careful about what I say, because if I say one thing and I get a strike, they're going to delete me for a month. Can't post anything for a month. And I want to keep this site up as long as I can. Because um, there's really, there really isn't anywhere else to go that I know of. And oh, by the way, I am on Odyssey. Odyssey is mirroring my uh, YouTube site. So that's a plus. I, I totally forgot about uh, Odyssey. Totally forgot about it. Uh, Rumble, I'm pretty positive I have a rum had a Rumble account, but it's gone. So, I don't know. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments all the way. What did Jesus say was the great commandment? Love the Lord. And what was the second? Love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law, the law and the prophets. So when you get people telling you, oh, well, we got to keep the law and Hebrew roots and uh, 
you know, you got to keep the Sabbath and blah, blah, blah. I think I'm going to believe Jesus. You know, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And if you live next door to a bunch of Satanists, may I suggest you move? So, and Torah keepers are a bunch of hypocrites anyways, because uh, until they start doing what the Torah says about um, those people that live in San Francisco, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what lives in San Francisco? Well, the Bible has a solution for people that live in San Francisco. And until they start talking about that, well, doing that, they're not Torah keepers. They're liars and hypocrites. Verse 2. So, love the Lord. Verse 2. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm. You know, if you were drowning in the ocean, wouldn't you want a stretched out arm to grab you and put you in the ark? Yeah. God's arm is stretched out. God says he's slow to anger and quick to forgive. And it's a good thing because I'd have been dead 40 years ago. Surprised he didn't kill me 50 years ago. What can I tell you? Verse 3. And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. You know, people, I got an entire Bible study on the miracles and plagues that God did to Egypt and how they are compared and contrasted with the book of Revelation. There's a lot of similarities to what God did with Egypt, the plagues, and what's going on happen in uh, the book of Revelation. You know, they, the God had, uh, there's going to be darkness, there's going to be hail. Um, they had locusts in Egypt. And they're going to have locusts with scorpions' tails in Revelation. I'm telling you people, I've done 10 years I've been doing Bible studies. I got a lot of them. You know, you don't have to listen just to new stuff. I mean, YouTube keeps deleting them faster than I can put them up. So, verse 4. And what he, the Lord, did unto the army of Egypt and unto their horses and their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, how, how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. And what he did unto you in the wilderness until you came into this place. And what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the sons, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up in their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. Um, they were, uh, they were challenging Moses, who God picked as his spokesman, and uh, the earth, uh, basically like an earthquake, opened up, swallowed them up, and then closed up on them, killed them. When God has a spokesman, you don't want to challenge that. I mean, let's face it, the Bible says that if you uh, reject Jesus, you reject him who sent Jesus. Well, who sent Jesus? God the Father. Verse 7. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it. See, God went was told Israel to go into Canaan and kill all the Canaanites. 
That's why they don't want you reading uh, the Old Testament, because you start asking questions. Well, wait a minute. Why didn't God tell Israel to go into the land and, and preach the love of Jesus to them? Oh, Canaanites, Jesus loves you. He, he wants you to be saved. So believe in Jesus. He loves you. No, he said, go in and kill them all. Why? Because they were satanic hybrids. They were satanic fallen angel human hybrids. God said, go in and kill them all. Wow. But you never hear that taught in churches because they don't want you to know that these people are still around. And they, they're running, they're t t running the show, basically. You know, God wanted to be their king. God threw hailstones from heaven upon the heads of the Canaanites when they were, uh, when Israel was fighting them. I mean, how would you like to have a, your enemy that wants to kill you being, having hailstones thrown at them from God and killing them all? You know, sounds like a deal to me. So, keep the commandments. Nine, that and that ye may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from whence ye came out, when thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Now, why is rain so important? Well, you know, the thing is, our bodies are, I've read, 93% water. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know the percentage exactly, but you go three or four days without drinking any water or any liquids, and your chances are you're going to be dead. Water is the carrier by which the soil can be trans. The minerals in the soil can be transported into the roots of plants. When there's no rain, there's no water, the plants can't, they can't do anything. So, you know, water is life. And um, at least on the earth, can I get a spiritual application? Jesus is the water of life, eternal life, spiritual life. So H2O is physical life, and Jesus is the water of life, the living waters of spiritual life. You know, there's so many spiritual applications to everything that goes on in this earth. And I think I did a Bible study on water. I think so. You know, I've done over 1,500 Bible studies, and many of them are over an hour long. It's rare when I do a 30-minute study. Most of them are 40, 45 minutes or longer. So, But the land whither thou goest is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Why did the Canaanites go to the promised land? Because they wanted to thwart God's plans. They wanted to contest Israel for the right to the land. They must have known that was the promised land. They had to have. So they're there to oppose God's plans, just like Satan tried to kill God up in heaven. Didn't work, but, uh, and I do a Bible study on that too. So, 
So, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken, listen, hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. God doesn't want part-time. He wants everything from us. He wants to be our king. And uh, and I'm a, I'm a hypocrite. I admit it. You know, I, I'm, I don't give God 100%. One day I might have to, including up to my life. Um, you know, it's like when people join the military, at least in the United States, you're basically signing a blank check and handing it to the government. And that blank check can go up to your life. Yeah. Well, that's what the Lord wants from us. He wants, he wants it all. You know, Abraham was very wealthy because I, I'm i guessing that the Lord knew that Abraham would never put his wealth before the Lord. Never. So, so, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in due season. The first rain, the rain you need when, uh, you know, you plant your crops, they need a gentle rain. You know, you, you don't want a, a flood washing the seeds away before they have a chance to, you know, take root. The first rain... And the latter rain. Now, what's the latter rain? Well, that's when you're getting ready to have harvest. You know, the 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 corn is grown, and and you know the apple trees are full of apples. You got to have the latter rain because you know that's once the plants are mature, that's when you want a good heavy rain. The first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle. You know, cow, cattle eats, they eat grass. If there's no grass, you ain't gonna have no great cattle. And, uh, you know, that Texas barbecue, right? And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves. Listen up, people. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. Well, that's the great majority of the United States and the UK and the EU today. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. These other gods can be money, power, uh, sex you know or like the church of satan do they serve another god absolutely uh you know when i was a baby christian i heard people say well you know god god uh uh you he's a different form in every culture but we all worship the same God, just got different names. You know, the Muslims got Allah and the uh, Hindus got Brahman or Brahma or whatever they call him, Brahma. And, uh, and I always asked them, uh, what about the Church of Satan? Yeah, well, I believe people say that we all worship the same God. Well, I believe that they do have the same God as the Church of Satan. I don't, but they do. But take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath 
be kindled. What does it mean to be kindled? You ever heard of kindling a fire? Yeah. If you've never gone camping, ask somebody that's uh, built a fire before. Then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. And he shut up the heaven that there be no rain. People, what happens when there's no rain? Well, there's no water to drink. Cattle doesn't, you know, grass can't grow without water. Cattle can't eat. Crops don't grow. Uh, can you say famine? And what happens when there's famine? People's bodies cannot fight off disease. They don't have the strength. They get sick. Disease always follows famine. Always. So no rain equals no food, which equals pestilence, disease. Never fails. So... And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. And I absolutely believe that the Lord gave the United States to his people. Absolutely believe that. Of course, they want us to feel guilt, but I don't have any, I feel no guilt. Verse 18, therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes and ye shall teach them your children, speak of, speaking to them. Speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So when you're sitting, walking, lying down, and when you get up, you should be teaching your children about the Lord. Not sending them off to college where they can learn about evolution. God's commandments, verse 20. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if, there's that if, ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him, then the Lord, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. What nations? The heathen nations. Isn't that what happened to the United States? God allowed us to drive out those heathen nations. Yeah, absolutely. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place upon uh, whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even under the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he had, hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Choose wisely, people. Oh, that's the Bob translation. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. Uh, does the EU and UK and USSA, do they obey the commandments of the Lord? Uh, no. 
So maybe that's why we're blessed, right? With drought and uh, yeah. Verse 28, and a curse. If ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day to go after other gods, which ye have not known. Do you think we're under the blessing or the curse, people? We are under the curse. Just in case you didn't know that. Uh, thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gizram and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, besides the plains of Morah? For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I, which I set before you this day. Let me tell you something, people. God's justice laws work. They really do. So, let's go to... Um, let's go to first Kings chapter eight. I guess we'll do verse 33. First Kings eight thirty three. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, talking about the temple, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up, and there is no rain, no rain, because they have sinned against thee. If they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin. What does it mean to turn from their sin? It means to quit doing it. Are you doing your neighbor's wife? Uh... <laughs> You know, or your neighbor's husband. That's called adultery. God wants you to turn from that. I, you know, uh, you know, honor thy mother and father. Uh, you know, not stealing, not murdering. That's what turning from sin is. If they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. 37. If there be in the land famine, well, no rain equals famine. If there be pestilence, well, after famine comes pestilence, which is disease, blasting, mildew. I'm guessing blasting is uh, like hurricane type winds, typhoon, uh, tornadoes. I don't know. I, I'm guessing. You know, high winds are not good for uh, crops, right? If there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, 
locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all the people of Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou, only knowest the hearts of all the children of men. And boy, people, that is a scary thought. Verse 40, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Wow. You know, think about it. In Second Chronicles chapter 7, uh, King David had died, and Solomon his son was ruling as king in his place, in his stead. And Solomon started off really good. So let's read Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. You know, the Lord has never appeared to me. Well, neither day nor night. Solomon was, you know, pretty special, if you ask me. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Verse 13, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. What is pestilence? Disease. Um, let me tell you something, people. According to history, the Black Plague, um, the bubonic plague, they called it the Black Death. According to history, about a quarter, 25%, that's one out of every four people, died when the Black Plague hit. Were the people wicked? Probably. Probably. Can you imagine that? A quarter of the population of the world dying of a, well, Europe, dying of a plague? They would take carts through the city and tell people to bring out their dead. Then they'd take the bodies out the outside of the city and burn them. The Black Death, they called it. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Verse 14. If my people, my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Boy, you'll never hear uh, William Fink or Christogenia talking this stuff because they think, oh, well, if you got the right skin color, you're, you're in like Flint. And if you don't know what that is, that's a movie that James Coburn did. One of my favorite actors at the time. It's kind of a James Bond spoof. But, uh, yeah. You know, uh, you know, just because you got the right skin color, you ain't going into heaven because you, just because you got the right skin color, you better have Jesus. Jesus said, except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. You're not getting in. And that's the Bob translation. But yeah, you get the idea. 
If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways. We got to turn from our wicked ways. That's what repentance means, people. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen to sanctify this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted, covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But, but, you know, that's isn't that what goats do? They but, right? But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. And people, let me tell you what. I think all the pyramids that you find all over the world, there's pyramids in Mexico, pyramids in South America, the Mayans, the Incas, the Aztecs, um, there's pyramids in China. Um, I suspect that they were places of worship for the fallen angels. God destroyed all those civilizations, basically. All of them. They're all destroyed. Some of them are fairly high tech, so. All right. All right, let's go to Isaiah chapter 58. And by the way, I did an entire playlist on Isaiah. I did an entire playlist on Ezekiel and Jeremiah. What is called the minor, I mean the major prophets, because... Um, although they are of major importance, they're called major prophets because of their size, as opposed to what they call minor prophets that are sometimes just one page in the Bible, like the book of Amos or Zephaniah or Zechariah. You know, they're tiny. Micah, Nahum, Obadiah. I got commentaries on that too. But um, Isaiah is a wonderful book. Uh, that's got to be that's got to be 20 or 30 hours worth of Bible studies right there. The book of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah is the most quoted um, book in the New Testament by Christ. Isaiah. A lot of prophecy in Isaiah. Matter of fact, they call Isaiah a mini Bible because it kind of follows the Bible as a whole. Bible has 66 books. Isaiah's got 66 chapters. The first 39 are kind of read like judgment. And then the last books from 40 to 66 are uh, reconciliation. So let's read part of Isaiah 58. 
Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take a delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have ye fasted? Fasted. I got a Bible study on fasting. Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. See, when you're fasting, you're not supposed to be uh, having fun with your spouse and uh, going to work. A fast day is supposed to be a day you stay home and sackcloth and ashes and repentance. Verse 4, Behold ye fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? It is to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness? That's right. Untie yourself from the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed grow free and that ye break every yoke. Um, why not, you know, aren't you going to let your slaves go free? Show them kindness and, and love? Verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Yeah. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? You know, is it winter time? And... You know, you're supposed to take the, the poor and feed them and bring them in so they don't freeze to death. You know, people, I've been homeless before. Yeah, really. Chaplain Bob's been homeless before. I moved up to Tennessee to be part of a church. And um, worked my butt off and um, gave money to that church. And um, when I uh, hurt my back and the company I was working for, they wouldn't give me any, uh, they wouldn't get, uh, give me disability or anything. I had no income, zero. Lost my job, couldn't work, had no place to stay. And... Um, it was winter. You think the, I asked the pastor if I could sleep on his couch. You know what he said? Uh, no, Bob, my house is, per, is too crowded. Oh, okay. Thank you, pastor. I appreciate it. You know, uh, I hope you enjoy all that tithe money I gave you. Yeah. So I was, uh, sleeping outside in 17 degree weather. I remember that. Thank the Lord I was blessed with uh, some heavy-duty camping equipment since I had lived in Colorado and I knew about cold weather. And uh, I remember vividly a uh, homeless guy died from being outside in that, uh, that cold snap. I remember that. It was on the news. Because, yeah, I was sleeping in my uh, truck in a truck stop. And I couldn't run. I couldn't run the heat because the uh, exhaust system was leaking. But I, I'd go into the truck stop, and the TV would be going, and this guy died. I don't know if he was drunk and passed out or what, but he died in 17 degree weather, froze to death. Yeah, I've been homeless. I know what it's like. You know, and that's what uh, believers are supposed to do. 
supposed to take care of those that are less fortunate. You know, but uh, feed the feed those that are hungry. And I know a lot of homeless people are, you know, they're just there to buy drugs. You know, why waste money on rent when you can buy drugs, right? So, yeah. Verse 7, the fast. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and thou, thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. You know, don't hide yourself from your own family when they need something, you know? Uh, is it winter time and you see somebody without a winter a coat and you've got five coats in your closet and three of them you haven't worn in five years? Why don't you take one of them or two of them and give it to the guy, you know, guy or gal or whatever? I mean, you know, read the second chapter of the book of James. Faith without works is dead being alone. We're not saved by our works, but works are proof that you are grafted into the tree. Yeah. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shalt thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward then thou shalt call and the lord shall answer thou shalt cry and he shall say here am i or here i am if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity what's vanity worthlessness speaking vanity um I guess anything that's not uh, of the Lord is vanity, right? Verse 10. And if thou draw thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shalt thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness shall be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. When everybody else is in drought, you're going to have you're going to be satisfied with wa uh, drinking water. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and a spring of water whose waters fail not. And oh, by the way, people, when I was homeless, you know, I never, I never went hungry. The Lord always, I, I don't know how that worked. I had no job for weeks no money no savings but i didn't go hungry only two things the lord promises you in this life is food and raiment clothes that's it verse 12 and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places they shall rise up the foundations of many generations and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. You know, you ever heard of the straight and narrow path? Yeah, go straight and narrow path straight to the Lord. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. All right, let's go to the New Testament and um, go to the book of Luke, chapter 4. I could read this whole thing, but I think I'm going to um, just start in verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. 
and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's the Greek rendering of, the, of Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And this is Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Uh, what captives? The captives that are in hell or Abraham's bosom. And if you don't know what Abraham's bosom is, B-O-S-O-M, do a search on my um, channel um, and look up Abraham's bosom. There was a compartment in hell that was not punishment. Uh, the rich man in Lazarus. So, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. Didn't Jesus give sight to the blind? Oh, yeah. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they say, Is not this Joseph's son? And he, Jesus, said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Um, and that's why in the military, they will not let the officers mix with the enlisted men. That's why the enlisted men have their own places to stay and go. Like the, and you have the officers have officers barracks and the officers club. And they don't want you to mix because there's a saying that familiarity breeds contempt. You know, when the officer gives you an order, you don't want everybody standing around going, well, why do you want us to do that? Uh, explain this to us. No, you need to do it. When you've got incoming artillery shells coming, that you hear the whistle of them coming down upon you, and the officer says, take cover, hit the dirt, take cover. You don't want stupid people standing around going, well, why do we need to do that? Oh, well, hey, Private, uh, you see there's artillery coming down, and if we don't hit the dirt, we're going to be kaboom. Yeah, you're, de you're dead. You know, familiarity breeds contempt. And that's what happens here. These people grew up with Jesus, and they think, well, he's no different than we are. Verily I say unto you, no, unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But listen to this carefully. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. I think that's uh, Elijah, E-L-I-S-H-A, Elisha. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months. You know, the great tribulation is going to be about three years and six months. Yeah, about three and a half years 
uh, I think it's 1,240 or 1,260 days, 42 months. Yeah, the Bible even says 42 months. Uh, a time, times, and dividing a time. That's in Revelation. In the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elysius the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. You know, he... Jesus here is telling them, uh, you know, there was a drought and only one widow was uh, had water and food because she uh, she fed the prophet and her uh, oil bottle and her, I guess, her uh, bread container never ran out until the, I guess, it was till it started raining. And, um, you know, there was a lot of lepers in Israel, but only Naaman was cleansed. Instead of the lepers coming to the prophet and asking the Lord to heal him, only Naaman was, uh, the Syrian was cleansed, you know. Verse 28. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Hey, Jesus, who do you think you are? We are God's chosen people. How dare you make a com compare us to, uh, you know, uh, the lepers that were uncleansed and the, the widow that, you know, the widows that went hungry and had no food and no water. How dare you compare us to them? Yeah. See, people don't like prophets telling them. I mean, Jesus is much more than just a prophet. But he was a prophet. He was also high priest and one day coming king. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereupon, uh, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Yeah, they took him and were going to throw him off the top of a hill to kill him, because they don't like what he had to say. But he passed through the midst of them, went his way. Yeah. You know, people, prophets had a very, very short li uh, lifespan many, many times, more often than not in the Bible. I mean, Jeremiah, nobody wanted to hear what Jeremiah had to say. They threw him in prison and were going to let him die in prison. But the Lord had other plans. You know, it's... It's crazy. So, you know, when there's drought, there's going to be disease. Famine, drought, famine, disease because of people's wickedness. But will they repent and turn back to the Lord and turn away from their wickedness? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. You would think this would be a t common topic in churches, but it's not. You turn on TBN and they'll tell you to Send your tithes to them so that God will bless you 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times. You know, after all, 
fueling up that Learjet is expensive. Have you looked at the price of uh, jet fuel lately? Wow. Well, I wouldn't know because, you know, <laughs> I had somebody once uh, tell me that uh, I had a mansion on the beach. You know, I'm one of those preachers, they told me. And I said, well, would you please do me a favor and give me the address? Because I would love to go visit this mansion on the beach. I really would. Please, please give me the address. I want to go visit it. No, people, I'm just a average Joe working. So, what can I tell you? So, with that in mind, all right, well, let's read Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 36. Someone asked Jesus this question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love the Lord thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Nothing about Sabbath keeping. Nothing about tithing, you know. Yeah, you know, you want to off, do offerings. And let's face it, if you love your neighbor and you see him out in the homeless in the park with no food and no coats and it's winter, well, you better know what to do. You know, it's a shame. Uh, there's uh, restaurants that um, would rather throw the food away than give it to their employees. Uh, from what I understand, Red Lobster is one of those. Can you imagine that? You work in a restaurant and they would rather throw the food in the garbage than give it to their people. May the Lord give the owners and their uh, reward like the rich man in hell so, what can I tell you? Pretty disgusting, if you ask me. All righty, well, uh, I guess I'm going to, I'm uh, on my list is the um, doing a study on the end times. I've done a lot of studies on the end times, but... The something bad's going to have to happen to the world that they're going to be looking for a Messiah or Christ, a leader to take them out of the mess, and he's going to have a kingdom, he's going to have to have a kingdom, and it's going to be financial. It's going to be military, militarily, and it's also going to be spiritual. Those are the three aspects of the kingdom of the beast. So it's going to be financial, military, and spiritual. Because he's going to demand worship. And, um, you know, the mark of the beast, which is kind of worship too, but you won't be able to buy or sell without it. I've had people ask me if they think the, uh, the medical treatment is uh, the mark. No, because it's got to be in the right hand or in the forehead, and you won't be able to buy or sell without it. Right now, that's not the case. But I do believe they are conditioning people to possibly do this in the future. I don't know. Time will tell. But somehow the Lord is going to allow the kingdom of the beast to occur. How the, how the, the beast will do it, I don't know. 
Some people suspect a faked alien invasion, perhaps a limited nuclear war, uh, perhaps famine or disease. Um, there's a number of ways it could be done. How will it happen? I don't know. I don't know. Only time will tell. All I know is um, Christians are going to be almost an endangered species. Yeah. People have no idea what's coming. The great majority of the church world thinks they're going to fly away any second and we'll never see the drought or famine or pestilence or persecution. And reason being, they don't read the Bible. So their ignorance will possibly be their undoing. You know, can you imagine you haven't eaten in three weeks and the powers that be say, well, we'll feed you, but you got to deny that Jesus is the Christ. And Jesus said, if you denied him before men, that he will deny you before the Father and his angels. Boy, that's, that's scary. The scariest words you could ever hear is the words out of the mouth of Jesus. I never knew you. Depart from me. Boy, that's... Oof. And I think there's going to be a lot of churchgoers that are going to hear those words, but I'm not the judge, I'm not the jury, and I'm not the executioner. So, and I'm not the judge on the white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. So, all right, people, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.